I type building coming up on this one. I'm going to get into Kendra Sheffield's skill set and show you why he probably has the hardest job in the secondary, maybe outside of being a post safety. All that right now. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Top billing. I don't envy anyone having to play a slot role inside corner or whatever in today's age because teams are getting very creative with how they deploy their slot receivers. You see a lot of these number one receivers in the slot. You see some of your better athletes now in the slot. It's crazy. So we see Kendall Sheffield right here matched up with Michael Thomas. Thomas running looks pretty much just be an inside fade, almost like a real wheel route, right? Pretty much call that a wheel route. So this is what I say about guarding the slot right here. He did a good job on this one, but you got to think about this, man. In the slot here, you have a two-way go, almost an infinite amount of space here, right? So it's not like when you're on the outside, you have that sideline as a defender. So if you start to get some of these good route runners with a two-way go, <laughs> that shit is tough. But you see right here, man, he does a good job decreasing the space. Actually, let's go a little bit closer. All right, degree of difficulty on this one, uh, 13 out of 10, right? For Michael Thomas's jersey number there, because Michael Thomas, top three receiver in the league with a two-way goal. You know he's a great route runner, but check this out right here, right? So he immediately comes to balance. Kendall Sheffield staying patient. Look at Kendall Sheffield, right? This is surprise. This surprised me on Kendall Sheffield. I've known Kendall Sheffield or known about Kendall Sheffield way back. I covered Alabama. Uh, he was originally an Alabama player before he transferred out of his first year to Ohio State. Actually went to junior college, I think, and then ended up at Ohio State here. But I had no idea he was 212 pounds. Kenneth Sheffield's built like a running back, man. Look at him, man. Look at his calves. Strong through the core. He's a strong dude, man, and he has to have 4-3 speed easily. He may be pushing 4-2 speed. He's the fastest man in, in college track and field, right, with the 60 meters. He was the fastest guy with that shit the dude can run. But look at this. Come to balance. A man staying patient. Immediately reacts when he reacts. No need to really try to get your hands on him on this particular situation. Just try to ride the hip pocket, right? So now you see him turning up, Phil. Now you get the correct arm to the correct shoulder, right? So that's what you want right here. Riding up, Phil. This is just meant to get you in position. It's not meant to turn him or impede his progress or anything. Get that right hand to the inside shoulder. And you're in good position, especially if he's talking about turning up field. But Kenneth Stre Sheffield's a strong guy. You see the separation by Michael Thomas here? He starts to fade this out. It went from a, a wheel route to like a fade. So that's why I'm having trouble IDing the route here. But it is what it is right here. You see him not, not impede anything. Don't grab any jersey or anything. He's not turning to locate just to get. I guess he figures he wants to catch up to him before he does all that. However, he just face guards him. And then keeps the space and then just plays the ball through the hands. Great job here. My boy Ricardo Allen comes through, cleans it up. Like a real safety should. Shout out to Ricardo Allen. Get off my boy. All right, check this one out right here. Super tough to guard out of the slot. My man right here in breaking route from Michael Thomas. You can see slot receivers sometimes backed off the line of scrimmage, so it's hard to get hands on man, right? Hashtag hands on man. But... Immediately comes to balance. Sheffield's patient. He's right there. But I don't blame him, man. You probably don't want to get hands on, man. He was completely juked out of his shoes on this one anyway. So trying to get back in the recovery phase. See the FEMA mode here. Just not enough time. And then Thomas does a great job of angling this route, right? Completely stacking Sheffield anyway. It's just a hard damn position to play, man. I do not envy Kendall Sheffield having to play that position. Um, I wonder if he's actually built more for the outside. However, in this particular scheme, you know, you need a little bit more length on the outside. And also, he's clearly the most agile of, out, of all the, out of all the cornerbacks that'll be there, um, including a guy like A.J. Terrell. To me, he's definitely an outside corner. So, uh, tough position to play, man. Inside fade from Michael Thomas. Sheffield does a good job on this one here. Look at that. Lots of window dressing from Michael Thomas. Maybe the pass could have been a little bit better here, but he's clearly on it. You see Thomas off the line. Comes the balance. Gives him that rhythm step, and Sheffield's still patient, allowing him to declare, then reacts to it. 
Like Thomas is hit. Michael Thomas getting like three or four crossover dribbles with his Allen Iverson, getting his Allen Iverson on there. But Sheffield right in his hip pocket here. Doesn't turn to locate, though, but I guess he's more concerned with just making sure the pass is broken up opposed to kind of intercepting it, though. But you can kind of see it from this side here. They didn't give a replay angle from this one, but you can see it the, the moment of truth scenario here. He's right on the inside, making this have to be a, a throw that goes over the outside shoulder. So he takes away kind of inside leverage there and then breaks it up. Good work, man. That's a difficult, difficult assignment. All right. This one a little different here. So this time going against Ted Ginn running a fade route, uh, he gives up outside leverage. And Ginn, you know what Ginn does, man. Kid has some serious wills. But, man, Kenneth Sheffield does too. Look, Ginn is unable to separate at the moment of true scenario. Boom. Got him. Let's check it out a little closer. All right, you see it here. Of course, Ted Ginn backed off the line of scrimmage. Now, check this out right here, right? Gives up outside leverage or gives up inside leverage, working with outside leverage. But look at the smooth hip transition. That's exactly how you want to do it, kids. You're working your pedal phase right here, kind of more in a shuffle phase, just staying patient and balanced. He declares you smoothly turn those hips. No need to do some retarded shit and turn your body all the way around and try to call it a speed turn or some goofy shit like that. He did exactly how you want to do it to be able to stay in phase. Now, I'm used to Ted Ginn putting his head down like this and just completely outrunning people. Even at whatever age he is now, he's still got some serious wheels. But look at fast how fast Ken Sheffield is. He's running stride for stride with this man, grinding like Jamaican clubs, right? Dick the hips. Pause, but he's right there with it, all right? And he makes this play. He gets a hand on this. This is a P.O.B. play on ball. Boom, see him break it up. I don't want to buy like, hey, man, KZ did something. Sorry, KZ didn't do nothing. Look at it from this angle right here. You can really see it. Again, goes up. It's pretty nice throwing ball, right? Again, got those hands that are put on backwards, I think. <laughs> but still, he could have came down with this if Kenneth Sheffield wasn't right there to break this up. Kid has some serious skills, man. I'm telling you. Just needs some more seasoning, more seasoning. But, man, he's going to have growing pains in the slot. This was a tough game, in my opinion, for Kendall Sheffield. Going against uh, Tyler Lockett here, who's fast as shit, shifty, everything you could think of, has really good hands, and working with him with a two-way go. Check this out. I don't know what's, how you could do this any different. Felt like it was good defense, and they still made something happen. Not to mention he's being thrown to, right? So we got one guy being thrown to by Drew Brees, the next guy being thrown to by Russell Wilson. I want to say that this was going to be a corner route initially, and Kenneth Sheffield plays it good, right? Right here at the point of contact, being physical with Tyler Lockett. Lockett trying to get back to the inside. Then I think he starts to panic, right? Maybe he thought it was going to be a drag route or something like that, but he starts to panic. You can't use two hands to try to transition with somebody. Lockett kind of shrugs him off there. See him still kind of hold on, and then he stumbles. And that's all he needs right there to get a, a step or two on you. Russell Wilson eyeing this down the whole way. First and foremost, if there was a pass rush here, he probably would have been okay. But, man, it's not like you get a pass rush on every play. So Vic Beasley starting to uncover there. Too little, too late, though. He has a step step on Kendall Sheffield, and he's probably as fast as Kendall Sheffield. There, so good physical defense, but Lockett was still able to do something with it. All right, back against Lockett. This time, Lockett's in a tight slot, running an over route. So he's got to defend way the hell over here past the numbers. It's just a difficult assignment. You hear me harping on it. He's being patient. It still doesn't matter. Lockett gets a step on him. Great throw. Rated. Even with that being said, man. You can see Kendall Sheffield's right on it, right on it. So Lockett doesn't even have a chance to turn this up, perhaps try to get some more yardage out of it or anything like that. It's just one of those routes, man. Let's check it from the other angle. All right, you can't see him. They're right here off screen, but you'll see him quickly flash there. And I'm amazed by Kendall Sheffield's recovery speed. Well, not amazed by it because I know he's fast, but look, he almost gets there. This dude's running an over route, and he's freaking Lockett. We know Lockett can fly, but Kenneth Sheffield is right there. Maybe if he could look, he's not locating. Not locating right here. If he could have turned and located and really stopped the panic mode, trying to play the ball through the arms, he may have been able to pick this off with that inside hand right there. But good catch by Lockett. 
All right, here we go. Mid drag from Tyler Lockett here. And from a technique standpoint, like to me, that's extremely hard to, to combat right there. And with that being said, you can see game of inches. He's still right there. He seems to always be in the frame of the play. But this is what I wonder right here. If you're coming off something like this, I wonder if you're playing a slide and you're Raheem Morris and the, and the staff there, should he not just go ahead and work with some type of leverage? So at the very least, uh, he knows. Suppose he's working with inside leverage here and was able to make Tyler Lockett have to work back through him to try to get to some of these um, in-breaking routes, right? Or really have to struggle there. Maybe you come up off of that. Maybe Russell Wilson has to come up off of that particular uh, read in his progression. Because to me, if you just play it like it's a two-way go, then you're in super recovery mode, super FEMA mode there. But at the very least, I, I, I would try to declare the one side. So then you know that you only have to play a certain amount of routes or the routes that the guy is going to do on the inside going to be much harder. But that's just me, though. And, of course, they're going to run their defense how they run it. You got to be able to play within the framework of your defense here. But he's right there. You just got a, a guy like Russell Wilson, man, who can just make the perfect pass. And Tyler Lockett has some really good hands there. The Cream Griffey catch. So, as you can see, man, it's a game of inches. He's right there. But his skill set is incredible, man, to be that. And I'm not even focusing on the tackling portion of his game. I think he's a very good tackler. Most of those guys that come from Ohio State are very good tacklers because they play a ton of zone defense at Ohio State. So, which is probably why he was drafted for the Falcons anyways. A ton of zone in the Falcons defense. To me, they're at their best when they are working zone, opposed to just pure man coverage. So, he does great covering the flat work and tackling running backs and, 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 and guys in that manner. So, he's a, a pretty complete player. He just needs more seasoning, but his skill set is incredible. From everything from the physicality to the speed to the technique and patience, I like what I see from Kendall Sheffield, but ain't nothing to it but to do it. We'll see how he progresses and see how these guys work with Isaiah Oliver and A.J. Terrell and Bleedy Ray Wilson and guys like that on the back end. Got to get that safety position together too, though, all right? But as always, real men watch to the end. Thank you for watching. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend. Make sure you're subscribed. Turn on those notifications. We can talk more Falcons football, all right? But it's your boy Murphy Baldwin, the underground king, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.